Good morning, world. Me and Lala are on our way to Martin Luther King's house. Yeah, Martin Luther King's house. I've never ever imagined going to his house. I didn't even know, honestly, I'm gonna sound real crazy right now, but I never even thought don't, that he lived. Don't, don't tell him. All right. He didn't even know that MLK was I from thought, Atlanta. I thought MLK was in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious. I'm really curious. I'm excited to go there. It's so exciting because in the back, they let you shoot real guns and they let you get shot by a pellet gun so you know, like, how it feels to be shot. You ain't know that? Can we just go to Chuck E. Cheese instead? <laughs> So, La, how do you feel? Oh, honey, I'm super excited to go see where an amazing man once lived, honey, to see how he grew up. What's a better word than amazing to, to describe Martin Luther King? Monumental, Ooh. legendary, yes. honorary, yes. exemplary. Yes. I mean, every word possible. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett Till, age 14, killed August 28, 1955. Emmett Till, Wait, a four- Do you know why Emmett Till was killed? Yeah, it's right here. Tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna read. He was killed because he had whistled at a white woman, honey, and they ended up hanging him. Dang. Yeah. Emmett Till, a 14-year-old from Chicago, was visiting his grandmother in Mississippi when some boys dared him to talk to a white woman. As a newcomer to the South, he had no idea how dangerous that could be for African-American male, even a kid. He found out. The next weekend, two men dragged him from a friend's house. Emmett was never seen alive again. The brutal murder of Emmett Till shocked the nation. As Merle Evers later observed, it said that even a child was not safe from racism, imbecotry, and death. Look at her, she got on a nice pair of Ray-Ban. This is from the 2016 collection. She was way ahead of her time. Look at these ones right here, honey. She got her lace front on. You can't even tell that this ain't her real hair. Get into it. Check out this man right here. He got on the Trump 2K, honey. You see the little side part under with the finger waves to the side. Look at uh oh, she got on that vintage Gucci. Have you look at the pleated skirt? I got this one too, but mine's just in green. The historic runway collection. Yes, Ooh, honey. Tell me how you feel about him. What he give you? Some heat. <laughs> Oh, uh, this one is serious. What's up, my nigga? How you doing? Chilling, all right. We can't talk about him. He's missing the leg. One leg forward. <laughs> <laughs> this was before dental care got invented. He needs to go see Dr. Heavenly. <laughs> How would you feel if you weren't allowed in school? Many kids around the world are denied education. Meanwhile, child, we got the right to go to education and we get to go and stuff for free up until college and we ain't even trying to be there. Get your education. 
So as y'all can see, we got our own personal theater that we get to go ahead and watch a little bit of history about MLK, who you know get to watch a personal movie with me and Kuwait. But today, y'all are mighty, honey. Follow me. Front seat, <laughs> you know how we do. You gotta come here to watch the film though. We ain't letting you in on all that. Stay tuned. Although he lived in a predominantly African-American neighborhood in Atlanta, Martin Luther King Jr., his sister Christine, and his brother A.D. experienced the sting of segregation on a daily basis. Sweet Auburn was where all the African-Americans could go, and that's where all the activity took place. Well, the Auburn Avenue neighborhood in Atlanta was one of the most important Dang. black neighborhoods in, in the country. It was an area where black businessmen, black uh, lawyers, uh, black professionals were able to succeed and, and thrive. That's this community that you're in right now, at one time was considered to be one of the richest black neighborhoods in the world. You're going to notice that on one end of the street, you see all your larger homes. But if you take a look on the opposite end of the street, you see your smaller homes. That's because Dr. King lived with two different classes of people. And they really feel that just by Dr. King walking out of his house every day, he can see the rich and he can see the poor. And that's what really helped him believe that the rich and the poor could get along. Martin Luther King Sr. always served as an example to his son how to not put up with, how to resist segregation. Daddy King took his son into a, a shoe store and they were sent to the back of the store because uh, they did not want a, a black person to be trying on shoes in front of the white customers. Daddy King took his son out of the store and told him he would not accept that kind of treatment. And that was uh, a lesson that Martin Luther King Jr. carried with him for the rest of his life. On another occasion, uh, they were stopped um, in their car by a, a policeman. They were stopped somewhere downtown and Reverend King was called a boy. He, he tried to explain to uh, ML that that was not the right thing to say to a grown man. And these were the kinds of things that served as examples to Martin Luther King Jr. that you could actively resist uh, that kind of treatment. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table, oh Lord. In the 1950s and 60s, That's black men, women, and children actively resisted segregation and the unjust laws associated with it. On Monday, the 1st of February, 1960, four black college freshmen, four friends, sat down at the Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina, to order coffee and donuts. The white waitress said, I'm sorry, we don't serve you here. Their young minds were added to the collective mission of the civil rights movement. The long-standing law denying lunch counter service to blacks was now being addressed head on. You know, it really makes you think and it makes you see like how ludicrous it is to not let somebody sit next to you at a counter. I mean, they're not harming you. They're just, they're just sitting there. They're not any different from you. I'm gonna sit at the welcome. Following the example of those in Greensboro, Black and white students from all over the North and South participated in sit-ins. Their efforts to keep the protest nonviolent were often challenged by angry and vicious white crowds. In an attempt to ensure the safety of protesters, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, Here about a bookstore. And that's Martin Luther King's house right there. How you know? Because they said it's right next to the bookstore. Oh, dang. I think he did have money because, child, look, there's a rocking, a swing rocking thing right there. That's what's expensive back in the day. So you think Martin Luther King had money? He had money and a drink. Wow. So what you see across the street is what he would have seen. Oh, wow. Right? And if you go up, it goes up about two more blocks, mm -hmm. you'll see the same thing, mm -hmm. including, of course, some works in progress. Okay, so we can walk up and down there until Absolutely. one o'clock? Yeah. Oh, let's see, what time is it? Tour is set for one, I believe. Set for one. So you got, oh, you got 25 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So they haven't touched the streets or anything, so everything is just like it was back then. 
Well, mm -hmm. the streets are paved. You know, have been repaved a couple of times, I'm okay. sure. <laughs> uh, and of course, originally there was a streetcar line that came up to the corner here. Gotcha. Uh, and then turned and went over to Edgewood. Uh, and, and there was also one that went that way on the boulevard. Those are gone. But then again, there's a new streetcar, one block down, uh -huh. right, which is, you know, close enough. Gotcha. Uh, Oh, yeah, no, I, I did see that. Before restoration, after. Look at the pictures. That's great. Oh, he was born in the house we about to go to. Martin Luther King was born in the house? Did you know what his first words were? No. You don't? No. It's all over. Are you serious? He was a baby genius. He was like, dream. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Idiot. So if Martin Luther King looked out, if he was on his porch today, this is what he would see. Of course not these cars, cause yeah. This is. But this is was, what he this would is see. The poor side, this was the poor was side, the side. And this was the. Rich side. Rich side. There was two sides, yeah. Yeah. He lived in between two places. And obviously Lala lives on the poor side and I live <laughs> on the rich side. <laughs> Hashtag Quay. Hashtag Lala, don't play. <laughs> Oh, this house is built. I just got for our home tour. So look. Dang, this is crazy. Wanna go sit on the swing? Come on. We gotta climb it though, you ready? I'm gonna help you. Give me your foot. La, you see how far this is from the ground? Yeah, I'm about to do it. You ready? <laughs> I gotta go. She, it's time. She played way too much. <laughs> I'm officially done with this idiot. <laughs> Too much. At all. See, I already knew it was something. I'll see y'all next time. Come on.